Hello everyone, this is In Game Art, and an unboxing of the offline product game review. This is Astro's Playroom for the PlayStation 5. Now, this is going to be done a little bit differently since Astro's Playroom has no actual physical disc. It all just comes available or pre installed on every PlayStation 5. So, things are going to be a little bit differently here. But my Astro's Playroom on my offline PlayStation 5 came with the version 1.2.0 on console. Now, there, I do have an online PS5 that has Astro's Playroom on it, and it automatically updated it. And I tried to uninstall the game and re-download it from PlayStation Store, but when I re-downloaded it, it automatically downloaded the most updated version of Astro's Playroom. So it's going to be really hard to determine how much sized updates it, it is. But from comparison from the size file size from my offline PS5 to my online PS5, it was around 600 megabytes. And it will take you to version 1.904.0. Sorry, I know it's a little bit different, a little bit harder to get provide the full information. I just want you to know that my console had the update version 1.2.0. And my the most updated at the time of this video took you to 1.904.0 which was around 600 megabytes in increase in size from my 1.2.0 version. I know that makes things very complicated. It's just because there is no physical version of the game available on a disc. Yeah, it comes all pre-installed on the console. And as well, I was still unlocking trophies with my unregistered account with my offline PS5. Now, I do find that odd that the My PlayStation 5 came with an updated version of Astro's Playroom. As I said, my offline PS5, with what I use to playtest all my games, has never once connected to the internet. Never once. So, I've never downloaded an update or anything like that on my offline PS5. So, my Astro's Playroom clearly came with a more updated version of the game on the con con console. So, that gives me an information that if you probably get like a newer console of a PlayStation 5, they automatically pre-installed the most updated version of the game on each console, which is kind of cool and it's kind of nice that they do that to make sure that they, you have the most updated version of the game right at the get-go. But sadly, any iterations from PlayStation 5 Slim and up require at least a one-time internet connection to get the disk drive to work. The only one you can get is the original first release, which I have a few consoles of those, like the Spider-Man bundle is the biggest first iteration, those don't ever require an internet connection. So, because it comes with the disk drive already pre-installed onto the console. So, that is the interesting that you may pick up a newer one and it comes with an updated version of the game. But, I don't know what the last version is that they came out that's from the original models. But, for the most part, offline the game ran great completely with the 1.2.0 on the console. Now, I do admit, I know this game is provided completely for free, and it's easy to free to download from the PlayStation Store, and it's only a few megabyte or gigabytes big, so it's not that big of a deal to download. I still would like to see a physical version, even if it costs money. I know some people would probably roll their eyes like, hey, it's a free game, just download it. I still want a physical copy of the game. Some would say hey, it's not that big of a deal to me. I like the idea that I can be able to pop this game in whenever I want to or uninstall on my console because I feel like it's taking up room and I may not be interested in playing the game right now. I want that ability to pop the game in onto my disc, disc and just install it when I'm ready to play it. As well as it since it's free, PlayStation has f full control to completely remove the game to be accessible. So then down the road maybe they might like PT from Konami. They could just decide to remove it since it's free. They have the full control to say what they want with the, the of the game. Yes, I know you probably roll your eyes and say that's very unlikely, but <laughs> I don't like dealing with chance. I like to have full control of what when I want to play a game, when I want to play that game. So I would very much see, love to see a physical version, and I would gladly pay for it, even if the game is for free. Now, this is my is my first time playing Astro's Playroom. It's not my first time seeing the game, because my sister actually got a PS5 before I did, during that whole shortage and everything like that. And I watched her play it, and I even watched my mom and my dad play a little bit of it. So, I got a general idea of the game. And overall, the platforming, 3D platforming that it is, was an enjoyable experience. It's a short experience. You can get through the game and 100% complete it like I did fairly quickly and easily, but overall the experience was smooth, there was no frame rate drops, no bugs, no issues, no problems. The game worked great to beginning and end, and I couldn't be more happier about that. That's with the 1.20 version of the game. 
I mean, there's nothing really wrong. The game has amazing music, I mean, amazing graphics. Cute is uh, cute as a button. Like the Astro is just the cutest character, uh, one of the cutest you probably could get in 3D platformers I have ever seen. The overall environment, the gameplay, and setup was all just very well done. Now, I do want to point out that my biggest problem is is that the game requires you to use the gimmicky controls in the game. This is one of my biggest flaws with the game. While I understand that people would roll their eyes again saying this is Astro's Playroom, it's supposed to show you the cool functions of the controller, which is fine, but it should be optional. The game could have easily been developed while you could be able to use certain button presses to be able to access stuff. Like, you have to use the DualSense feature to climb with the monkey, you have to move your controller up and down, or use the kite to fly around, and you have to use your motion up and down with your controller, or, you know, I was joking around with my family, about you have to give your controller a blow job just to be able to progress through the game. I got to the point where I did not like the idea of blowing on my controller, because if anyone knows, if you blow on something, you, you're, you're spilling spit onto your controller, and I'm not a fan of that, so I started singing to my controller, which was pretty funny. I just started going, and it made me progress. I found that way more entertaining and fun than blowing on my controller. But anyway, I just wish they, they would have been more considerate about that and developed a game where you can play the game strictly from the controller than forcing a gimmicky mechanic onto the game, which for me greatly damaged the overall enjoyment of the game. Well, I still had fun when it wasn't required, like just a normal 3D platforming moments, but it was just very aggravating that and completely they fail to the developers to making it required. I know a lot of people get upset with that, but that's just my stance on it. As well as I did discover some weird little oddity. I Luckily, when I was playing through it, I was almost like halfway through the game. Power went out at my house, so I lo my game just went out. And I since I never went to the main menu with the game, it never saved. So I had to run through the entire segment again. So I'm guessing the game does like some autosave feature when you go back to the main menu. Other than that, it never saves, which seems like a very weird design oversight. But uh, so just every time I completed a section, like the complete the whole like the GPU, CPU, or the memory completed that section, I just went back to the main menu and make sure it's saved. Just a little safety backup on that. That's probably like the one glaring like I wouldn't call bug, but flaw with the game. Make sure you always X out back to the main menu because you could lose your progress, all of it, if power went out. I'm not sure if you probably close out the application, like if you're in the middle of the game and you just hit the PlayStation button, close out application. I don't know if it saves when you do that because that seems very like easy to do. But just keep that in mind that for some reason it does not do auto saving. It only does it when you go to the main menu of the game. Other than that, there was nothing real else wrong with the game. I just relatively enjoyed the game. I just wish there was an unboxing. Uh, I could have done a proper unboxing with a physical game. I actually thought about doing an unboxing of a PlayStation 5 because I mean, it's on the console. But I figured that just would have been a waste of time and a waste of video. Extended the video for no reason. But um, in the end, I still had fun with the game. But man, i just really disappointed with the developers making it required to use the gimmicky controls mechanics to progress. I found that very, very just frustrating. And I did not find it fun whatsoever. It just was a chore. It just was boring. I didn't feel fun. And there were many times I died simply because I wanted to use the controls. Like I resort to using the joystick and the game didn't support it. Or you're rolling with the ball. You have to use your touchpad. And I kept wanting to use the joystick because I just inherently want to use that. It just would made the more sense. So you made something yeah, cool, but it's gimmicky because you just made it more challenging than it me to be, or made it more steps. You didn't make it better, you just made it more steps to be able to progress. So to me, it just, there's no denying it. It just did severe damage to the overall enjoyment of the game. But in the end, it still worked fairly good for those mechanics. I can see the developers realized that it was a bad design to do it like that because they made these segments really short and to the point because even they know it's bad so i just why why force it why why do it like that but in the end i had fun i just wish i could just do a better explanation of the whole stuff because then I mean, again my game had more an updated version because of my console i couldn't really check it because my online ps5 had an already most updated version and i couldn't do anything to prevent it it's just 
I this is more like a review of the game. I had fun with it. I'm glad to have it. I'll definitely want to check out Asteroids Player uh, Astro Astrobot, the actual full game. Definitely intriguing playing that because I had fun. The game was just cute as a button, and the, the music was phenomenal. The graphics, the gameplay was all good. Other than when it goes to the gimmicky controls. Other than that, you ax that out, this would have probably been a 10 out of 10. But with the gimmicky controls, easily knocks it down to like a 7. Like 7, maybe, even probably 6, depending on my mood on that day. Especially when it wants me to give a blowjob to my controller to progress. Like I said, I found it fun to sing to it. I found that much better. Do some opera singing. Clear out your voice a little bit. It was way more impactful. It felt more like I was giving will to the game by singing to it. I don't know. I like to do it like that more than blowing on it. But Ian, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know this is not my typical video of not doing an unboxing of a physical game, but I haven't played it, and I wanted to check it out, and I still had fun, and I 100% completed it. Didn't platinum it. May do that later. Not really something I shoot for. I don't, I'm not really a trophy person, and I just... I can't wait to play more of this, and I'm definitely going to check out Astrobot really soon here. So like always, thank you all so much for watching. I can't really leave links. I guess I'll leave links to a PlayStation 5 for you. So <laughs> I'll try to do that for you guys if you want. Hopefully, maybe we can try to convince Sony to make a physical version of the game, but I doubt they will. But in the end, I'm glad at least it comes on pre-installed on every console. Just don't ever delete it, because if the servers get shut down, you can't access this game ever again at least at the time of this video. So like always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next unboxing video. Bye-bye!